You want to find that drive and focus that has you locked in and on fire every single day? My book, The Mirror Motivation, will do it for you. I bought a copy for you. You take care of the shipping. The book is free. Click the link down there. I got you. Stay all day. It's no better than tuning into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work. Putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is that go-getter energy that moves anyone, me, you, everybody else, to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Putting all this together, what you get is the mindset, the method, the philosophy, the book, the podcast known as Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is embarrassment is a choice. The feeling of being embarrassed. If any of you have ever felt that or if you have ever saw something happen to somebody and you just knew that they had to be embarrassed or something happened to you and someone told you that they probably felt that you were embarrassed or they expected you to be embarrassed. The whole point that I want to drive home to you today is that being embarrassed is a decision that you make within yourself and the decision that we all we each get to make based on what we go through so let's get a definition of what this word embarrassment means so that we're all on the same page the definition of embarrassment is a feeling of self-consciousness shame or awkwardness all three of those self-consciousness shame and awkwardness they're all choices these are all relative based on the person whom is going through a situation and based on how you decide to feel you don't have to feel self-conscious shameful or awkward ever if you don't want to these are all choices that you get to make now i talked about self-consciousness so i went very deep into self-consciousness a couple places first of all in my book the super you which is the subtitle is unlocking and living with your highest level of confidence if you don't have that book i suggest you get the bulletproof bundle where you can read that at workonmygame.com and i also talked about it in the chapter on confidence in my book work on your game using a pro athlete mindset to dominate your game in business sports and life and today we're talking about how you can take any situation that you go through, any circumstance that you're in, that despite the fact that maybe a whole bunch of other people, the masses, or someone who's talking to you directly, how they may feel of this self-consciousness, very conscious of themselves, paying so much attention to what they think other people are thinking, shameful, they just feel like they're not worthy, they feel like they are just not living up to whatever standards maybe you have for yourself or what others have for you any awkwardness you just don't feel like yourself you don't feel normal so to speak i guess we can say you don't have to feel these feelings any at any time ever in life no matter what you go through and i'm going to explain exactly how and why that is today so hopefully this will help uh, activate some mental alchemy in some of you who have ever felt this feeling of embarrassment shame awkwardness self-consciousness in any situation and once you get rid of this there's a reason why in the two books that I referenced, The Super You, which is all about confidence, and in the chapter on confidence in my book, Work On Your Game, that I've talked about this topic specifically under the umbrella of confidence, the umbrella of self-belief, because everybody wants to believe in themselves as fully as they possibly can, because we all understand, whether you've experienced it or not, we all understand that when we believe in ourselves 100%, we probably will do more, we try more things, we execute a whole lot better, we just feel better about ourselves. We, I mean, feeling good about yourself is a good thing, right? I think we all want that. So the less we feel embarrassed, the more we have at least the opportunity to feel good about ourselves. And I think on that alone is worth it to talk about this topic. So let's get right into it. Point number one, today's topic once again is embarrassment is a choice. You only feel embarrassed when you're thinking of what they are thinking or saying. That's the only time you feel embarrassment. And while in many cases in life it does matter what other people think, such as in a job interview, if you're dating, if you're trying to build a brand and you want an audience of people to recognize your brand and respect your brand and trust your brand, if you're trying to make a sale, you probably want that person to think highly of you and think positively of you because if they don't, they're probably not going to purchase anything. It does matter in these cases what people think, but it doesn't always matter what other people think. And even when it does matter what other people think, it's not everybody thoughts that matter is just a select few people it's a certain audience of people whose opinions matters not everybody in the room or everybody in the world or everybody on facebook whose opinions matter is certain opinions the people who you're trying to sway the people whom you're trying to persuade is probably not everybody at the same time so this whole point of 
feeling embarrassed when you're thinking about what other people are thinking and saying. This is where self-consciousness comes from. This is the root of it right here is that we do our best work when we're working off of instinct. Instinct works 10 times faster than conscious thought. And conscious thought is pretty fast. Any of you ever read any books on how the mind works or anything about how the synapses in the brain fire to when you have a certain idea or a thought and then you actually say something or do something based on that thought it usually happens very quickly a thought could travel from your head to your legs in a very short period of time but instinct happens even quicker it doesn't have to travel anywhere it just immediately happens as soon as you feel something you just react you just respond to it immediately and your instincts are always telling you some truth it may not be telling you what you should do but it's always telling you some form of truth and we be when we become self-conscious what happens is our instincts get shut off we stop following our instincts and we start thinking about every single thing that we're doing about every single thing that we're saying now you may think that to be a good thing right wouldn't it be good to think about everything that we're doing you don't want to just be doing things mindlessly without thinking about them right dre not necessarily there are some areas in life sometimes when you're doing things where you don't need to be thinking if you are walking for example and i'm guessing that everyone who's listening to this knows how to walk you don't need to be thinking consciously about the next step that you take and stepping up this step and tying your shoes and doing these things that you can do without even thinking about things that you usually do mindlessly once they become conscious and you're thinking about them that's when you're in a state of self-consciousness all of a sudden the things that you almost you do every single day without thinking at all all of a sudden they become a little bit harder to do because you're thinking about them like wait a minute how do i tie my shoes or which way do i actually walk which way do i turn when i get to the street things that you do without thinking as soon as you start thinking about it all of a sudden it becomes much harder than it was before because the subconscious the area that controls those instincts it works a whole lot better when you and your conscious mind get the hell out of the way when your conscious mind just you know, shuts up and dribbles, as they say. If you get in the way and try to step into a lane that you're not supposed to be in with your conscious thinking, interrupting instinct, all of a sudden things go slower. All of a sudden there's this halting motion to the actions that you're taking. You're not natural anymore. And the more you think about the fact that you're out of that natural state of following your instincts with 85% of the stuff we do, we follow through, we do through instinct, not through conscious thinking. Once we start taking over that 85% with conscious thinking, all of a sudden it's not as natural, it's not as smooth. And because we're thinking about it, other people may notice it, or we think that other people are noticing it, and we become more self conscious. So it's kind of like a self fulfilling prophecy, and there's a spiral that just goes downward. The more self conscious we become about things, the worse we do when it comes to performing whatever it is we're supposed to be performing. So this is the, the challenge of self consciousness. And where, how it comes about is when we lose our focus off of the most important thing and we start focusing on the thing that's not important. So what is this most important thing that we lose our focus from? It's focusing on what we need to do ourselves. What is the task at hand? What's the most important thing I need to be doing right now? And for most of us, most of the time, the answer to that question is never make sure that what everyone else is thinking about me is a good thing. That answer is never make sure that I look a certain way so nobody in the audience no laughs at me or thinks negatively of me or ignores me or whatever it is you don't want. If we're thinking about the thing that we don't want, what are you doing? You're thinking about it. And the things you think about, you draw to you. You attract to you. You make them larger in your mind and they become larger in your reality because we each have our own individual reality that can be changed at any time that we want. But when you're consciously thinking of what other people are thinking, then that's what you're thinking about, what they're thinking. But here's the problem. You never know what other people are thinking. I mean, you can hear what they're saying, you can see what they're doing, but you never quite know what another person is thinking. Therefore, when you get into this self-conscious state and you're trying to guess what other people are thinking or you're trying to gauge what they're thinking based on their words or their facial expressions or their actions, you will never have a clear black and white answer. Therefore, you could forever be in that state trying to figure out what other people are thinking. You'll never have the right answer and you'll be self-conscious forever. You'll never get back to focusing on the main thing, which is yourself. And this self-consciousness, again, it's a downward spiral that just, it perpetuates itself. The more self-conscious you become, where you're thinking about yourself, but you're thinking about yourself through the eyes of what everybody else is thinking, and you'll never have a right answer, all, you, all it does is make it worse. You become less and less natural, you're following your instincts less and less, and things just don't go well for you. Everyone who's listening to this has been in a position of being self-conscious, of feeling awkward, maybe feeling shameful about a situation, feeling embarrassed about something. And when you feel that way, all of a sudden you're out of yourself and you're so into yourself, you get out of yourself. That's kind of how it works. 
So here's the thing about confidence. And this is something that I talk about. I talk about being bold. Bold energy, really confident energy. When someone's fully confident, they're not thinking about themselves at all. Because what is confidence? Confidence is a belief in yourself and your ability to do things. When you are 100% all the way filled up in your belief in yourself and your ability to do things, you don't have to think about you. You know why? Because you know it's already taken care of. You're fully confident, I'm good. I don't need to worry about what I can do because I already know what I can do. I'm 100% confident in it. So then you can take that same consciousness and you can project it outward. This is why if you think of some of the most confident people that you know or most confident people whom you've ever met, usually they're not thinking, you can see by their energy and the way they talk and even their body language, their nonverbal cues, that all their energy is projected outward. They're putting their focus and their consciousness on you, the person that they're talking to or the audience that they're delivering to or the performance that they're giving to the audience, whatever it is that they're doing. They don't have to think about themselves. They're not awkward. They don't, they're not shameful at all. They're not self-conscious. They're never embarrassed. Why? Because they already know that this, the self themselves, they're good with that. They don't have to worry about that. They don't have to double check on it. They don't have to make sure everything's right. I'm good. Everything's straight in that area. So this is the thing with confidence and self-consciousness, how, they, how the two of them work together. When you become too self-conscious, you're so worried about making sure that you're in a good space because the confidence is not there. So you have to check on yourself consciously. The problem is instincts usually do that. Instincts usually check on you. So as soon as you start consciously checking on you, you become 10 times slower. You, are, you have 10% the speed of what you had before and all of a sudden everything's unnatural. Have you ever seen a person who was experiencing embarrassment, who was experiencing self-consciousness and shame, you could tell that it was just something not natural about their movements, about their energies, about their eye contact, about their, the way that they talk, their speech, everything, because the conscious mind is in the way. One thing that's faster than the conscious mind is the unconscious, the instinct. So when you start thinking about what other people are thinking about you, a question that you'll never have an, an accurate answer to, that's when the self-consciousness begins and it will never end because you'll never get an answer. You'll never solve that mystery of what somebody else is thinking, which means the worst thing you can be doing is taking your focus off of you because we know the human beings, we can only focus on one thing at a time. The worst thing you can do is take your focus off you and put it on what you think other people are thinking. And the problem with that is at that point, now you have, let's say there's one other person, you become self-conscious because you're concerned with they're thinking about you. At that point, now you got two people thinking about that person and zero people thinking about you. That's a problem because that other person, they're probably not thinking about you. They may be looking at you. They may even be talking to you or even about you, but they're not really thinking about you. When we talk about other people or we look at other people, we laugh at other people, we pay attention to other people, we clap for other people. It's Yes, it is something maybe that they did that precipitated it, but it's really about us. If you applaud somebody for telling a funny joke, it's because the joke made you laugh. If you're mad at somebody and you say something angry to them, it's not, be not because of them, it's because of you. Because you got angry about the situation. You got mad about whatever it is they said. You felt the need to say something to them. So even when we are projecting our energy towards another person, it's not really about the other person. It's always about ourselves, which means when you're focused on what other people are thinking of you, nobody's focusing on you and you're losing time. And when you lose time, you lose life. Point number two, today's topic is embarrassment is a choice. When you feel embarrassment, it's really about, as we already talked about here, it's really about your confidence. And it's a question of when embarrassment comes around or the potential for embarrassment, let's call it that. When that comes around, the question becomes, is your confidence real or is your confidence paper thin? Because thin confidence, let me, let me give you a picture of what thin, paper thin confidence looks like. It looks the part. If you saw someone who had a thin, paper thin confidence, it looks the part. They look like the same thing that a, someone with real confidence looks like. But the problem with paper thin confidence is as soon as it's pushed on, as soon as it gets wet, as soon as it is challenged, as soon as things are not going as smoothly as one expected them to go, that confidence falls apart. As soon as something unwanted happens, as soon as that confidence is challenged, it's, it's paper thin. Like I said, it falls apart like wet paper is so easy to break. Real confidence, ladies and gentlemen, is not about how you look on the outside. It will be reflected in how you look on the outside. How you look on the outside is a symptom of real confidence. It's not the source of real confidence. You understand the difference. A symptom is just something that comes along with a thing. The source is what creates a thing. 
The source of real confidence is how you feel on the inside. It's not how you look on the outside. Though, again, it will be reflected in that in some ways. Sometimes it doesn't, but many times it does. Real confidence isn't about making a show of yourself, quote unquote, a show. Real confidence is an energy that radiates outward from within. It is rooted on the inside, the true confidence that you have. It's not about being brash. It's not about uh, talking a certain way or walking a certain way or dressing a certain way or having certain material possessions or having a certain uh, tone of voice or a certain uh, speech pattern. It's, all of those things can be symptoms of real confidence that comes from within, but they don't have to be present for someone to have that real confidence. Again, as you have it long enough, consistently enough, and it's solid enough, those symptoms will start to show themselves over time. But when that real confidence is there, it's really based on what's going on within. And the way that you really find out is when somebody is challenged. And this is why I've done so many episodes uh, here on the show talking about being challenged, why you need people who will challenge you, why you need to be around situations that will challenge you, why you need to put yourself in a position of being challenged, of being uncomfortable and staying there, because that's how the confidence gets built. That's why you need to go through conflict. These are episodes. These, these are things I just talked about over the last couple of weeks. These are things that you need in your life to help build your confidence because all these things, discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative, they all feed off of each other and they all supply each other. The more discipline you apply, the more confident you'll be. The more confident you are, the easier it'll be to stay mentally tough. And when you're mentally tough, you don't have a problem taking initiative because things, even if things don't work out, you're willing to take that step forward. When you're fully secure on the inside, ladies and gentlemen, nothing on the outside can shake that. Simple as that. Doesn't matter what's going on with other people, even what's going on with you. Even if a situation that seemed normal and everything was going well, all of a sudden things were not going well. Even if that happens, when you are fully secure on the inside, it's not going to break you. Or it's not going to tear you apart like that paper thin confidence that some people show on the outside, but there's nothing behind. There's nothing backing it. There's no strong foundation backing it up. Point number three. Today's topic is embarrassment is a choice. The best performers out there. Whether that be a salesperson, an athlete, a comedian, a professional speaker, a CEO of a company, the best performers are largely numb to embarrassment. Numb to embarrassment, meaning this, that when things happen that would embarrass the average person, the top performers are unfazed. So it's not that they feel embarrassment and just don't act like it. No, they don't feel the embarrassment because, again, the whole topic here today is embarrassment is a choice. Embarrassment is not something that happens to you, ladies and gentlemen, in case any of you was uh, unclear about that. Embarrassment is not something that happens. Confidence is not something that happens to you. These are choices. You decide to feel embarrassment. Embarrassment is a state of mind, and you don't ever have to travel through that state of mind if you don't want to. Just as confidence is a state of mind. You don't ever have to travel through the state of confidence if you don't want to. Thing is, you've already been there. Every one of us was born fully confident, but then we were socialized, some of us, and some more severely than others, to not have as much confidence as we had when we were born. We were all born fully confident. So you've all been through that state, at least at some point, even if you haven't been there recently, you've been there at some point. Embarrassment, you may have never been there. Maybe you go there all the time. Maybe you live there right now. Maybe you got a permanent residence in the state of embarrassment, but you don't have to stay there. You could change your permanent residence if you didn't know. So I guess it's not really that permanent. But the best performers are numb to embarrassment. They're numb to the feeling, the state of embarrassment, meaning something could happen to them. They could lose their business. They could uh, come in last in some big competition. They could get fired from their job. They could blow a sales presentation. They could tell a bunch of jokes at their comedy show that nobody laughs at. They could bomb on stage giving a presentation. You don't have to feel embarrassed when any of those things happen. Who said that you had to be embarrassed? Someone who's probably used to being embarrassed. So they say, oh, I would be really embarrassed if that happened. Or they would say something like, man, it's so embarrassing what happened to you. You don't have to be embarrassed. That's a choice. That's the whole topic here today. The best performers, and I hope you're connecting the dots between what I'm saying here. If you want to be one of the top performers out there, you must numb yourself to these states of embarrassment. Again, remembering that all of this is a choice that you get to make based on what happened around you. Events that happen to us are not positive or negative. They are all 100% neutral. Everything's neutral. What you're listening to today is neutral. What happened to you yesterday? Neutral. What's going to happen to you today? Neutral. What's going to happen to you five years from now? Neutral. All of it's neutral. And what's going to happen to anyone around you or any situations that you're involved in, whether they happen to 
push you forward or push you backwards and keep you in the same spot or slow you down or cost you a lot of money or make you a lot of money. Every single one of those circumstances is a neutral circumstance. How you decide to look at it determines whether in the long run, when you look back on it, if you can say it was a good thing or a bad thing or a neutral thing. But if you want to be accurate, you should just call it a neutral thing. Everything's neutral. How we respond to it determines how we see it. And that's all relative. Two people can go through the exact same thing and have com the complete opposite opinion of that situation. And neither one of them's wrong, neither one of them's right. Unless they both say neutral. Uh, then they would both be 100% right. The best performers are numb to embarrassment because the embar their embarrassment line is high. In other words, some people, if you're watching this on video, you can see me here. I'm holding my hand at about shoulder height. Some people's line of embarrassment is about this high. Something happens to them, as long as it's more impactful than this line right here about shoulder height, they feel embarrassed. But the top performers, their line for embarrassment is up here like off the screen, as high as you can reach, eight feet high in the air, which means the same things that happen to other people that make those other people embarrassed doesn't bother the top performers. They're not bothered by much. There's a lot of things that would have to happen for that top performing individual to ever feel embarrassed. And they can choose to raise that line anytime they want. You can raise the bar, your embarrassment bar, anytime that you want to. What bothers most people does not have to bother you. You make the choice whether it does or it doesn't. You can't play, let's say for example, a sport at a high level if you're always thinking about what the fans are thinking, because there's too many fans for you to be doing that. You can't think what every single one of the thousand fans in the audience, let alone 10,000, let alone 100,000, fans are thinking about you every time you do something in public, whether that be publish a podcast episode, put a video on YouTube, go play in a big game, anything where everybody's going to be watching you, you can't be thinking about that. You won't perform too well because your conscious mind will be going haywire. Your instincts won't be able to talk to you because your conscious mind is just is hogging up all the bandwidth, all your mental bandwidth, so to speak, if you understand what I'm saying. CEOs, when you're running a company, you're going to have to make a tough decision at some point. You're probably going to have to make several tough decisions, plural, that are not going to please everybody. Somebody's not going to be happy with one of the decisions that you make. And you have to be okay with the fact that not everybody's going to be happy with the fact that you made such and such a decision. Now, people talk about someone like Steve Jobs, famous CEO with Apple products and damn near 99% of you who are listening to this right now, right now have an Apple, you own something that was made by Apple, something that was cooked up in the brain of Steve Jobs. And when Steve Jobs came back to Apple and he started slashing all those product lines that we talked about recently, he fired a whole bunch of people too. Because there were a whole bunch of people working on products that Steve said, we ain't selling those anymore. And a whole bunch of people lost their livelihood when Steve Jobs fired all of them. From Apple. He fired thousands of people. And I'm not saying that to say that Steve Jobs is a bad guy. Listen, in life, people get fired. That's what happens when you have a job, somebody can fire you. The thing is, he had to make that decision, that tough decision to help push the company forward, and not everybody was happy about that. I'm sure there are some people, some of those thousands of people who got fired were really angry, really upset, really sad, not sure what they were going to do in life after they ended up getting fired based on Steve Jobs' decision. But he couldn't stop his whole life and stop his business and stop doing what he wanted to do based on trying to please everybody because it would have been impossible for him to please everybody. You understand? So a CEO is going to have to make those decisions. An athlete, if you're playing a team sport, I guarantee you're not always going to get along with every teammate. And I guarantee you're not always going to be happy with every opponent that you play against. But you got to do what you got to do because at the end of the game, somebody got to win and somebody got to lose. Dave Chappelle, famous comedian. Everybody knows Dave Chappelle, right? His last Netflix special was called Sticks and Stones, and it offended a whole lot of people. I mean, he, he started out letting people know that they were probably going to be offended by some of the things that he talked about. He talked about politics. He talked about uh, sexuality and transgenders and bisexuals and lesbians and homosexuals. He talked about, what else did he talk about? He talked about a whole lot of things. He talked about race relations. There's a whole lot of things Dave Chappelle talked about, and I found it hilariously funny, this comedy special, but there were some people who were offended by it, offended by a comedian telling jokes, which I don't get, but in this day and age, I do get. But the thing is, Dave Chappelle, do you think he knew before he got on stage and told those jokes, knowing that it was going on Netflix, do you think he had an idea that some people were probably going to be pissed off about it? I'm pretty sure he did. But if he had come out there and tried to be safe and only tell jokes that everyone would agree with, we wouldn't be talking about it. And Dave Chappelle wouldn't be Dave Chappelle. Many people in life, especially athletes, they like to talk about getting in the zone. And I did a whole section in my book, Work On Your Game, about getting in the zone. If you don't have that book, I suggest you go get my book, Work On Your Game. Get it at workonmygame.com. Embarrassment. 
Whenever you're feeling embarrassed, self-conscious, shameful, embarrassment knocks you right out of the zone. If you were in the zone and you start feeling self-conscious, you're out of the zone. If you were in the zone and you start feeling awkward or you start feeling shameful, you're out of the zone immediately. Tiger Woods. Remember when Tiger Woods went through about 10 years ago, he went through this, this scandal with it was a situation with his wife where he had been uh, having sex outside of his marriage and more and more women kept coming forward. At the same time, his golf career wasn't going that great. And then Tiger Woods came out and he went through a he went through a shame campaign. And I think we can call it that. Is it fair to say what Tiger Woods went through at that time was a shame campaign? He started apologizing to people who were not he was not married to. He was apologizing to his job. He was apologizing to his sponsors. He was apologizing to his opponents on, on the PGA golf tour. I'm like, why the hell is he apologizing to them? He doesn't sleep with them. <laughs> He's, he doesn't have sex with them. Why is he apologizing to them? What did he do to these people? I don't know. But Tiger Woods got caught up in this whirlwind of shame. He got caught up in this whirlwind of awkwardness and self-consciousness. He was embarrassed that this whole Tiger Woods mystique had fallen apart during this whole scandal that had come up to him. But here's the thing. The Tiger Woods mystique didn't have to fall apart the way that it did. Now, Tiger Woods mystique fell apart in large part due to Tiger Woods cooperation with that mystique falling apart. And I'll explain exactly what I mean. Just because... Tiger Woods got caught or exposed for having these extramarital escapades does not mean his mystique had to fall apart. Just because the PGA I don't, had something negative to say about it doesn't mean his mystique had to fall. Just because a bunch of other golfers had negative shit to say about Tiger because of that scandal does not mean his mystique had to fall. None of those things would have made Tiger's mystique fall. The one thing that made his whole the whole thing fall apart was Tiger Woods deciding to go on this what I'm calling the shame campaign, going on and apologizing to people who he was not married to. He's married to one person, and I think he had maybe two kids at the time. There's only three people he needed to apologize to. Everybody else didn't mind your goddamn business. That's my opinion of the situation. When he did that, he fell out of his zone. He lost his all his mojo for his whole career, his whole golf. And Tiger Woods was not a very good golfer for, at least by his standards, for several years while he was trying to recover from that. Now, I know he has some physical injuries as well, but do you think those were connected? You think the karma, the energy of all of that had some connection to each other? I think so. Now, on the other hand, let me tell you another celebrity who went through something that people could say was embarrassing, something that might make one self-conscious or awkward, Charles Barkley. Now, Charles Barkley used to play for my hometown, Philadelphia 76ers, uh, when I was growing up, late 80s mid to late 80s early 90s and there was a situation in i believe this is in milwaukee wisconsin charles was at a bar which is i guess charles likes to go to bars he's at a bar by himself and some guy starts talking shit to charles barkley now charles barkley is a pretty big guy he's about six four six five but he's wide it's not even just his height it's just he's a wide a big dude and if you ever saw charles barkley play you know this guy could throw his body around and he didn't get pushed around by anybody so some guy is talking shit to Charles Barkley. I don't remember, recall all the details of exactly what happened, but some this guy at the bar, who I'm pretty sure was not 6'4", 250 pounds like Charles Barkley, threw something at Charles Barkley. Allegedly, it was some ice out of a drink. He threw the ice at Charles Barkley for whatever reason. Maybe the guy was drunk. Maybe he didn't like the Sixers. Maybe he was mad Charles wouldn't sign his autograph. Who knows? But the guy throws ice at Charles Barkley. And as the story goes, Charles Barkley grabbed this guy and threw him through a plate glass window at the bar. So you know how you walk past a bar and it has this, this big window that you can see inside and you can see outside? Charles threw the guy into that window. And of course the glass breaks and the guy is probably hurt a little bit. Charles, of course, he gets arrested, he gets charged, he has to go to court. They, the charges eventually got dropped and all that. But as, as the story goes, when Charles was you know, having his last words in court and the tra charges are being dismissed, the judge, asked Charles Barkley, sir, do you have any regrets about the situation, what you went through? I believe the judge asked this, maybe it was the media who asked the question, but either way, Charles was asked this question, and Charles said, yeah, I do have one regret of this whole situation, and my regret is, I wish I'd been on the second floor and throwing him out the window from there, because he would have been a whole lot, he would have been injured a whole lot more instead of throwing him out the window on the first floor. Now, I'm telling you that story, and that did actually happen, Charles did actually say that, I'm paraphrasing it, but that's what he said. I'm telling you that to explain to you, just because you went through something that some people would say is objectionable, that some people would say is the wrong thing to do, that some people would say you should not have done that, that some people would say I wouldn't have done that if I had been in that situation, 
None of those things means you need to feel embarrassed. None of them means you need to feel self-conscious or awkward or shameful. And they damn sure don't mean you need to apologize to anyone, let alone someone who had nothing to do with the situation. Embarrassment is a choice. Charles, Tiger Woods went and, and apologized to the whole damn world because he cheated on his wife. Charles Barkley threw a guy through a glass window and said, so what? Now, you could choose to make a decision somewhere in between those two, but understand it is a decision. Point. Let's recap today's topic, which is embarrassment is a choice. Definition of embarrassment, a feeling of self-consciousness, shame, or awkwardness. Point number one, you only feel embarrassed when you are thinking of what they are thinking and saying, whoever they are. And as DJ Khaled says, stay away from they. While many case, in many cases in life, it does matter what other people think, it doesn't always matter, and it's not everyone's opinion whom you need to sway. Point number two. Whether you feel embarrassment or not is really about your level of confidence and self-belief. Real confidence does not fall apart when it is challenged, when it's pushed, or when something unwanted or unexpected happens. Real confidence is not about making a show of yourself. It's an energy that radiates outward but is rooted within. When you're fully secure on the inside, nothing on the outside is going to shake that, such as a, quote, embarrassing situation. Point number three, the best performers in life are largely numb to embarrassment, meaning their bar for embarrassment is very high. What bothers most people does not bother them. You can't play a sport at a high level or be a CEO or be a comedian without being a person who has a high bar for embarrassment because some things will happen to you that are public, that a lot of people know about, that may not be the outcome that you desired, may not make everybody happy, but you still got to make the decision that you have to make. That's the penalty of being a leader. If you ever get into the zone in life and any form of embarrassment kicks in, it'll knock you out of the zone immediately. Again, look at Tiger Woods as an example. He got knocked out of his zone because he felt embarrassed over a situation that had nothing to do with the general public. Tiger Charles Barkley had did something that had a little bit more to do with the general public. I mean, it was just some random stranger who was bothering him and he felt no embarrassment, no shame, no awkwardness, no self-consciousness at all. Now, I'm not saying you need to be like Charles. I'm not saying you need to be like Tiger. I'm just offering you two examples. You could choose either one or somewhere in the middle, but understand that whatever you choose, it is a choice. Now, what's going on in the gang group? Every single episode of this podcast, we talked about decision making. We talked about confidence. We talked about the choices that you make mentally. And we talk about decision making. We talk about deciding what type of person you're going to be in life. I've done at least three episodes on every single one of those subjects that I just gave you. And some of them I've done about 20 or 30. All of those are available to you in the game group membership. Understand that what you cannot see in the feed of this podcast, wherever you're listening to this, those episodes are not available anywhere else other than in the game group membership. We are on episode, damn near 1,300 episodes of this show. The other 1,000 plus that you can't see in your feed, the only place to get them is inside the game group membership. And if you've been listening to this show, you understand this is not the normal podcast. All right, This is not throwaway banter. This is not us just going back, me and some co-hosts going back and forth on current events or talking about some bullshit or me interviewing people and asking the same questions over and over again. These are every day what I'm giving you is what I call a master class on these mindset, mental game, business, you know, life advancement, personal growth tools. That's what you're getting on this show every single day. And if, you're, if you are listening right now, then you could just tell by this episode, imagine if you had 1,300 of these just like this, because that's exactly what I deliver. And anybody who's been listening to the show, if you listen to more than one episode, tell me I'm lying. Exactly. So if you go to workonmygame.com slash game group, that's where you can get a free 14 day trial to the game group membership. That is access to all of the past episodes of this show. Six courses that you can't get access to anywhere else. All of my TED talk videos, a bunch of my keynote speeches and commentary videos on how they came to be, how I put them together, what the presentations were like. A lot of behind the scenes stuff that you wouldn't know about. A bunch of my top material all curated and organized for you because I had the deepest content vault of any individual on the internet in the history of the internet. And that's all true. Get again, 14 day, two week trial to the game group at workonmygame.com slash game group. Work on your game. Dre all day.